In this demo session, I'd just like to take you through um, developing a new Windows Phone app and adding the test framework to it using NuGet. So we're going to start by creating a new project, which hopefully won't upset people too much. Um, and we're just going to create a new project, so we'll call it Test App, and it will be T uh, Test One, Test App One. Um, so we create that, and we want to create it within Mango. Um, and when Visual Studio starts opening the XAML, we'll just cancel that because I don't really like seeing XAML. Um, so let's just push this to the other side. Um, and you can edit this if you want to and add other things and all that sort of um, loveliness. Right, so in our test app, what we'd like to do is we'd like to take the NuGet packages and we would like to add the Windows Phone test framework. So if we take a look, there are two packages that you'll find listed under Windows Phone Test. Um, one of them is BDD, which is for the um, for the Windows side of things, for actually write it, running the tests. Um, and the other one is the app, which is what we want to install into this app project. Um, you accept the terms, which are MSPL. We don't accept the terms, in which case stop watching now. So we've installed that into the project, and you can see it's just added one assembly. Um, and then we'd actually like to make sure we initialize that library. And to do that, we go to the bottom of the constructor in uh, app.xaml.cs, and we want the test framework, we want the automation client, we want automation, we want the instance, and we'd like to initialize it. So we're just using the default um, settings for that, um, and if you want to as well, you can make sure you don't ship with it by doing hash if debug. Um, and you can also, if you want to, edit the project file so that you um, conditionally include the reference so you don't ship with it in release at all. Um, so you've added it there, that's not a uh, too difficult to do, and that's all you have to do on your phone app. So now we'd like to add a test project, so to do that we're going to create a new project, and this is a Windows class library, and this is going to be called testapp1.spec. Um, that's just my naming convention, I've no idea if it's right or not, I kind of copied it from a sample um, I think Steve Sanderson had done. So um, that's all we've got. Um, I'm going to delete the, the class one from this new project, so it's completely empty. I'm then going to take the properties. This is one fiddly thing you have to do. Um, and I'm going to drop it from any CPU down to x86. And that's because we are going to link to a COM library that is 32 bit. So now I've done that, I'm going to add the new get package to this. And again, what I'm going to look for is the Windows Phone test package, and this time I'm going to add the BDD one. So we install it. As we install that, what we discover is we also pull in specflow, and we also pull in NUnit, and again we've got license terms in there, but that's just an MSPL license if you click on it. Um, so I suspect most people can pull that in. If you can't pull it in, come and talk to me and I'll sell you something. Um, I'll have to talk to Expensify, who actually pulled all the work together for that, but um, we will see. Um, so, um, we've got uh, BDD pulled in, um, and uh, you can see at this stage we just have a project. Um, what it has done is add a package to this .config for NuGet, and in app.config you'll see we've got a um, few th settings we have to put in there. So, to find these settings, the first one is product ID. And that's what uh, um, Windows Phone uses to um, identify your app. So if you take a look at the, the phone project and you take a look in properties, WM app manifest, you will find the product ID. And all you have to do is copy that across. Um, you then can do the path to the um, application icon. Um, you can use relative pathing in here, but I find it uh, easier when I'm doing a quick demo to use the full path, so I'll just copy that. You then need the path to the zap, and to do the zap I just normally use the one that's in the bin directory, so bin debug, and this is called testapp1.zap, and then the name of the app, which in this case is testapp1. 
So that's it. Those are all the settings you need. Again, if you want to, to do more advanced things, there are a couple more options there you can set. Um, but that's really only to get around local firewall type rules. Um, so we have two projects. Um, both of them should build at the moment, hopefully, if I build this. Okay, so everything's built. Um, no warnings, no errors. Um, and what we can now do is actually add a test. So what I'm going to do is in the spec project, I'm going to add a new item. And the new item is a spec flow feature file. Obviously you need spec flow installed in order to see these items. Um, and we'll just call this main app feature, main page feature. Obviously we're not going to do much of a test right now, but uh, for now it should be a reasonable thing to put in there. So we add this feature file. And you can see what it adds is it adds an example calculator. Now if you take a look at the readme that is on the um, on the website, um, okay, it's not open at the moment. If you take a look at the readme, then we have actually got an example. So let me just pull up a new uh, window. And we will go to GitHub. GitHub expense file Windows Phone test framework. And then in the README here on the website, you can see that there is a sample feature. So we're just going to take that sample feature and we replace what's here. And so what does this sample feature do? It says uh, feature app test. In order to test my app, so this is just free text, as a developer, I want to see it start and I want to take a picture of it. So the only scenario that's in here is that given my app is uninstalled and my app is installed and then my app is running, uh, then I want five, I wait five seconds, then take a picture. In fact, I should really be and take a picture. So um, I changed it to that. Um, it's just free text. It's just a gherkin. Obviously, these things are matched with uh, with regular expressions to actual steps in the test. And now I've done that. Let me build the project. Oh, I've already built most of it. Um, but let me just build. Oops. Let me build the project again. Get back into here. Getting ahead of myself. So let's build the project. And now we've done that. I can actually, if I want to, run these projects. So if I, I'm using ReSharper here, and if I just choose, uh, I'll choose debug unit tests, and then I'll pull the emulator back across so you can actually see things working. Uh, the emulator here is a clean image. You can see it's just got um, Internet Explorer and settings set up at the moment and when we run our app and Visual Studio will slowly start the test. It installs the app and it's going to wait five seconds. It's going to take a picture of it. And then hopefully as long as everything succeeded the test will, uh, will exit. So if we take a look at what the test run was um, then you can see here's the session it started. Um, it ran the test fine. Um, and um, if we then take a look at where the spec is, we can actually open that in Explorer. And it ran the test with a working directory of the project itself, of the, the spec project. So when it's opened it up, we can see in Explorer that actually one of the things it did was take this screenshot. Slowly opening it. So you can see hopefully that's the screenshot it took from the emulator. Um, and so that's it. That's all you have to do to get a, your first test up and running. Obviously you want to write more tests than that and slightly more advanced ones than that. Um, but that's uh, roughly how it works. Um, I hope uh, you have a lot of success with it. Um, and yeah, I love NuGet. It certainly makes development a lot easier.